Today on the newscast, Israelis head back to the polls tomorrow, March 25th, to elect a prime minister. Can Benjamin Netanyahu hold on to power, and what will the result mean for Israel, the Middle East, and the world? A top Israeli analyst joins us to break it all down. That's coming up. Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman Newscast. It is March Madness time here in the States, one of my favorite times of the year as the NCAA basketball tournament is in full swing. But Israel right now has its own version of March Madness. Israelis head to the polls tomorrow, March 25th, to elect a prime minister. It's their fourth election in the past two years alone. Now, Benjamin Netanyahu is Israel's longest serving prime minister. He's been in office since 2009 and also served as prime minister from 1996 to 1999 for a total of 15 years overall. The modern state of Israel has only been in existence for 73 years, so for nearly a quarter of that time, Bibi has been at the helm. But the reason Israelis keep going to the polls these past two years is that Netanyahu has been unable to build a solid and lasting coalition. So will he hang on to power and who might be able to replace him? Let's head to Jerusalem to get the inside story from the editor-in-chief of All Israel News and one of the top analysts and observers on all things Middle East, Joel Rosenberg. Joel, thanks so much for joining us here, as always, on the Watchman Newscast. It's great to have you. Thank you, Eric. Great to be with you. Hey, a big event coming up, the Israeli election, the fourth in the past two years, the fourth time Israelis are going to the polls. Prime Minister Netanyahu obviously looking to hold on to power. I want to start by asking you about an interesting dynamic here, Joel. Gideon Saar, who was a former member of the Prime Minister's Likud party, has broken away and formed his own party. Tell us about that, and is he a serious competitor and a serious threat to become prime minister? Gideon Sar was the number two most popular leader in the Likud party, Netanyahu's party, for years. He was a loyal Netanyahu deputy. I've known him for 15 years, and he couldn't take it anymore. And he bolted from Likud in December, started this new party, a New Hope, and looked like he was going to be Netanyahu's prime challenger. But I will tell you that as we go into the final hours here before the election, Guidon Sar has, has faded. He's run a very bad campaign. It's been basically, you know, anti-BB, but, but Guidon Sar hasn't really laid out his agenda positively. Tax reform, economic growth, uh, COVID, I look in vain. I like him, but I look in vain to know what is he for. I know what he's against. Yeah, he's the one serious, one of the serious competitors on the right, Joel. We also have Naftali Bennett. Now, he's right. been around for years, obviously, with a very interesting relationship and a history between he and Prime Minister Netanyahu. Could Naftali Bennett be emerging as the new face of the right? And does he have a legitimate shot to become prime minister? So let's break that into several different points because the, the, the question is actually you have to break it out. Naftali Bennett is uh, a former chief of staff of Benjamin Netanyahu who had such a terrible falling out that he that Bennett left the Likud party, formed his own political party, served as defense minister for Netanyahu, and then was fired by Netanyahu. So Naftali Bennett uh, is, is going around the country the last few months saying it's time to fire the CEO of Israel, meaning fire the, his old mentor, Benjamin Netanyahu. Now, Bennett has not said what Guidon Saar has said, what so many other political leaders here have said, which they will never, ever serve in a government with Netanyahu. That's Netanyahu's biggest problem is he's, his pathway to building a coalition, a governing coalition is, is narrowing because so many leaders, not just on the left, but the center and the right, are saying, no, we're done with you. Naftali Bennett has not said never, but he is making the case that it's time for change. So this is, this is the challenge. Now, Naftali Bennett was a, a special forces commander in one of the most elite forces in Israel's army. Uh, he started four businesses. Uh, he sold one of them for $145 million. He, so he's a CEO. He's got an, he's run a very good campaign, better than Guidon Saar. 
uh, with an economic reform plan and a COVID recovery plan and a number of other things. So he has positioned himself as a serious player. That being said, he, uh, Naftali Bennett and Guido Saar are dividing up the center-right votes that if they were together, they'd have 20 to 25 mandates, but they've divided them 8, 10, 12 apiece. So it's, it's not clear exactly what Bennett's pathway is, um, but I will say this. If, if Bennett, if, I'm sorry, if Netanyahu cannot form a government after, after Tuesday, then Bennett might become the one candidate that could pull everybody together who don't want Netanyahu, but don't hate Netanyahu too. I mean, Bennett has sort of positioned himself, he's being described here as the kingmaker. You have this growing number of leaders. Again, most Americans, most evangelicals, they have no, they don't know any other name except Netanyahu. So there'll be a big shock if Netanyahu doesn't form a government. If we are heading into the post-Netanyahu era, we might be. I can't, you know, Netanyahu is a shrewd political cat, but we could be looking at the end of Netanyahu, and that would be a shock to Americans, to evangelicals who don't know any of these names other than him. But a number of them are in position to potentially, Yair Lapid especially, he's going to come out of this thing with 18 to 22 mandates. That might put him as the second biggest party after Bibi's Likud party. The, the left wing in Israel has essentially collapsed. It's the only Western democracy that I can think of that there is no left wing. In fact, the two most left wing parties in Israel are literally hanging on by their teeth and may not cross the electoral threshold. You have to win at least four seats to get any seats in the Israeli system, right? You have to get 3.25% of the vote. It's a little inside baseball, but the point is, it's very possible that Labor and the Merits Party, which are very far left, might not even make it. They probably will, four seats, five seats, but they're right on the edge. So left to right is one way to look at it, but this is really formed, this campaign is very different. This is about the pro-Netanyahu camp and the anti-Netanyahu camp. The pro-Netanyahu camp is, is very limited right now. It's Likud and it's the ultra-Orthodox parties. There are three of them uh, that have committed only Bibi. Uh, the, the term here that the Netanyahu team is using is Rock Bibi, which means only Bibi. Like, uh, you know, he may have flaws, but he's the only guy that we can trust. So the ultra-Orthodox parties have stuck with him. Nobody else has. So the question is, there's the, there's the anti-BB crowd, but the anti-BB crowd is divided into people who really hate him. And those who, like Naftali Bennett, like we said, they don't hate him. They just think, look, he's, he's done a good job, but now he's making a lot of mistakes and his day is done. He's, he's the long, you know, he's the longest serving uh, prime minister in Israel. Must speak enough already, <laughs> they're saying. And so Bennett is trying a little bit different. He's trying to appeal to voters who like Bibi's path, but don't like him at the moment or don't think he's doing a good job. Looking ahead, what are some of the biggest challenges that the next Israeli prime minister, the winner of the Tuesday election will face? Well, the biggest issue here, uh, well, there's two. One is, are we going to war with Iran and Hezbollah, the Iranian terror proxy force in Lebanon? The, the, the risk of war is rising steadily because um, Iran is aggressively moving towards enriching bomb grade uranium. So Israel is running out of time to get the international community to find a way to stop Iran from doing this peaceably. And if Iran, if Israel can't get the world to do it peaceably, it, it may feel that it has to attack Iranian nuclear sites uh, with a preemptive strike. That would unleash uh, something that I write about in my, my political thriller, the Beirut Protocol, which would be the retaliatory option for Iran is Hezbollah. 150,000 missiles coming from Lebanon into Israel in retaliation for a, a preemptive a military strike against Iran. So, so, so war with Iran and Hezbollah is the number one national security issue. And then of course we have the rebooting of the economy and getting you know, past COVID and getting Israel uh, citizens working again, getting businesses open again, getting tourism back, opening up our airports. And these two issues, that's why the country is so split. 
because they don't, the country doesn't trust BB on the economy right now and to deal with COVID properly. But they do trust him more than anybody to deal with Iran. And so you've got this split where people feel like it, it, it's, it's a big risk to move from Netanyahu, who for all his flaws, is not just a leader of a country of nine or 10 million people. He is a world leader. He is a world statesman. And they know that the, there's a cliff that you drop off. If you, if you move past Bibi, the next person, as good as they are, they don't have the diplomatic experience, the international experience that Bibi Netanyahu has. And that's, that's, that's why the country is literally divided between the anti and the pro Netanyahu camp because they can't quite figure out, are, is it safe enough for change? They want change. They just don't know if it's safe enough given the threats that we face. Yeah, Joel, it's going to be fascinating to watch it all play out on Tuesday. Hey, we will be following it closely at All Israel News. You're doing great work at your site, Joel, and we Thank will you. be reading the Beirut Protocol. Thanks so much, Joel. Coming to us from Jerusalem, we will talk to you after the election to get your analysis on how it all panned out and what comes next. Eric, great to be with you, the Watchmen, TBN. I appreciate all you're doing. Thanks, Joel. Folks, remember, you can check Joel out at allisrael.com and be sure to pick up his brand new bestseller, The Beirut Protocol. It is a great read. Hey, let's keep Israel in our prayers that no matter what the outcome is tomorrow, it will be clear. The threats gathering against Israel are serious, and the last thing Israel needs is any political instability as Iran and its proxies like Hezbollah are on the march. No matter what happens, we know that God is still on the throne and he is sovereign. Thanks for joining us here today on the newscast. Until tomorrow, God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, click subscribe, and tap the bell icon to turn on notifications for new Watchman Newscast episodes every weekday.